Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I want to talk about is sort of the, the changing map of what is called high horology, but we're really talking about a little more than that. I think high horology and, and one way was set up as a marketing term, but it, it still applies to basically really top horology by whether all of the kinds of little things that they possibly include, like especially whether or not uh, the watch is made of precious metal because the prices of those have gone up so much that I don't know where they apply anymore. But anyway, so let's get started on this. Uh, first of all, th these are sort of what I view as the established high horology. Um, Patek Philippe, Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, Veseron Constantin. Uh, some still call that the Holy Trinity, and then they argue that some other ones should be there instead. All of these have won the top prize in the GPHG, the Grand Prix de Royal de Genève. Um, and on the bottom row, so of these, uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but uh, I think they probably do quickly about uh, all Langa and Sunda. But Piaget and uh, Chopard both have won uh, top prizes for their horology in the GPHG. And uh, Longa has won several. I mean, it's. I mean, well, all of them have, but they're they're uh, the most have been won by Audemars Piguet. This is this is the GPHG, but they've won some other ones. But all of these watches uh, have that sort of, I guess you'd call it aura or sense of it. Some people wouldn't agree, especially about Piaget and Chopard, but. Yeah, they are. They're really <laughs> up there. Now, um, this next group is sort of like a group that's coming along and replacing the old guard. I have, there are a lot of <laughs> qualifications on these. Uh, Beauvais is one. They, again, they won the top prize, uh, GPHC. H. Moser and Company, they've won a lot of prizes. I don't think they've won the top one yet. Uh, same with uh, Parmigiani, Fluier, they won a lot of GPH prizes. Uh, Breguet, now Breguet is sort of an interesting one. They're owned by Swatch. And they're, <laughs> I'll say they're interesting. Uh, Breguet has also won the top award and uh, their watches I love the looks of them. I I really have a lot of hesitation about, and this includes Patek Philippe as well as the using silicon hairsprings in a okay with a silicon escapement, but the but a hairspring that can't be adjusted changes changes the certain essential elements of mechanical watchmaking, and I mean, but they're great. I mean, they're very accurate. Uh, Langenheim is another one. This is a very strange one in the sense that they have this number not only of fabulously good watches, they also have the movements that they made or actually were made when Marco Lang. Now, there was some kind of financial or management thing and um, he had to leave. Uh, Marco Lang left in about 20 19, I think, 2020, right in that area, and started his own company. And his he has nothing but a waiting list for <laughs> this watch he made. And um, I'm not sure how that's going to go. I mean, if you're just making sort of one watch, that's one thing. But Lang, uh, Langenheim is one of these, they, they have this set of great watches uh, the new crew there, they have made a couple, I think. They made one called the Hector, using, again, using a movement uh, that was uh, made by uh, Marco Lang. Grand Seiko also is making a lot of inroads into sort of being recognized as one of this, this kind of watch, one of the top ones. 
Now, the the other thing that's changing the landscape are is the role of the independents and. These are some of the top independents. MBNF is another one that uh, could easily be added. I mean, there here you have the basically the entire membership of the AHCI, the Independent uh, Watchmakers Association. And in order to get into that, you have to make your own movement uh, or something, I guess, equivalent to that. And these. These guys win awards left and right. Uh, Ferdinand Berthold, F.P. Jorn, Karibun Lannan, Gurbel Forse, Laurent Ferrier, Gronfeld. All of these uh, have, and they also have a big enough selection, you might say, so that they're more than just a one watch watch company. Uh, MBNF, like I said, that's. Uh, Oh, uh, Max, Ruzier, and Friends, MBNF. So a lot of different people are involved in that, but there's one main one, uh, and that's another one that has won several awards. And so I think a lot of people are would rather have one of these independents than sort of the old group of the old uh, Holy Trinity, so to speak. Now, a final group, and there's a lot of stuff happening here, and this is with the what you call the fashion brands. I think a lot of the views of the fashion brands were basically they would have a design that made it look like something from their company, and then what they would do is that they would slap in a, a quartz movement, and that would, you know, call it a day. Um, here you have some a lot of complexity. Uh, one of the watches that has won, again has won several awards and is doing a lot of interesting things is Hermes. Uh, what they did early on, they bought 25% of um, Vacher. Vacher is the Sandoz Family Foundation's movements. They're usually identified with Parmigiani because Parmigiani is part of the Sandoz Family Foundation. So it's sort of a vertical organization. Uh, but Hermes bought 25% of them. So there's, they're, that, that's what they use for their movements and they're excellent movements. Uh, they've also come a long way into making men's watches. I think they were very much identified with women's scarves and women's uh, handbags, especially. Uh, but they, they've been, they've come a long way. They've also uh, used uh, the skills of other, of independent watchmakers like um, uh, Jean-Marc Viderac of Agenor. And that's another, that's a whole other story. Uh, Chanel, the same thing. They've got, uh, I mean, <laughs> Chanel is so much has, they seem to be expanding. One thing I think it's extremely important to understand, these companies are just super wealthy. They've got a lot of money, Hermes does, Chanel does. Uh, both of them are sort of their own masters, so to speak. And uh, what Chanel did, they they bought 20%, I think, of F.P. Jorn. They bought a, what they call a friendly share of Romain Gauthier. Uh, and then they bought 20%, I believe, of a company called uh, Canissi. And this is the one that Tudor uh built and what uh, Chanel does is that they have one of their movements, one of their made movements for a watch they call the J12 and they have both a woman's version and a men's version and the J12 is called the uh, the watch, this is J12, the movement is called, I think it's called the Canissi 12.1 and that uh, is based on one of the um, Oh boy, it's called the T, uh, MT, Manufactured Tudor 54, but it looks 
it looks more in the style that you find in Romaine uh, Gothier movements. Uh, Gucci has a, they're coming along. They, they have a watchmaking facility, I believe, I think it's in La Chute de France. Uh, I know Chanel has, has one there too, uh, just for making watches. A lot of interesting stuff with that. Now, then Cleef and Arpels, they have been winning watch prizes left and right over the years. Now, for the most part, for the complications, they, they'll win uh, the women's co complications. They worked with a company called Aganor uh, and Jean-Marc Viderec. However, uh, they're owned by Richemont, and what Richemont has is that they have their own movement building facility called Val Fluyer. And so Van Cleef and Arpels I, in, in watches, in men's watches, there's this classic one they have called Monsieur um, Arpels. Okay, it was designed by Pierre Arpels. This is their latest version. They wanted a um, they wanted one with dual time and automatic to sort of bring it up to date. The other one, the original one, I think was hand wound, and I think they had a Piaget movement in it. But this is this is their updated one, and it's got a movement by a total movement by Jean Marc Viderec. Hasn't been that popular, but the women's watches are. This is. The thing with women's watches has become very interesting because the Apple Watch has been wildly popular um, with women as, as well as guys. But women's relationship to mechanical watches isn't quite the same as guys have. I mean, there, there, there are not too many women who collect watches and so forth. But it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Finally, uh, Bulgari. Bulgari won the 2021 Eguida Or, the grand prize. And uh, Audemars Piguet, even though they have more watch prizes than anybody else, it took them almost 20 years to win their first Eguida Or. And um, so here you have Bulgari doing it. And so this is another thing. So these these fashion brands rather than putting courts in not only are they um working with really top watchmakers they're starting to buy up part of them too and so i think one of the things we're going to see the some of the interesting changes in the high horology i think they're moving in in new directions and i think the the independents will continue to play, I think, an important role, and but their output is so small uh, and so good that you're, I don't know how much it's going to have. On the other hand, you have these, the companies like uh, Parmigiani under this, the, the guy who, I think he ran Gucci and turned it around. Uh, by the way, too, I think Gucci is owned by a company by Louis Vuitton. V is, the company is called LVMH, uh, and so that's another another sort of wrinkle in it that you have these big big companies owning some of these fashion brands. Uh, same with uh, Bulgari. I think they're also owned by LVMH. And Van Cleef and Arpels is owned by. Uh, Richemont, but Hermes and Chanel, these are sort of unto themselves. Anyway, I'd like to hear what you think. And uh, if you have any of these these watches, uh, what you think of them, and or if you're interested in sort of getting up, moving up to the really these, uh, to the high, high horology, like to hear them. Opportunity to subscribe if you like. Until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the Art and Science of Watch Collection.